everyone. Welcome to our um, Inside Code session for today. This is a very um, special Inside Code session. Um, my name is Marlene, by the way. I'm admissions coordinator um, here at uh, Code University of Applied Sciences. And um, today I'm joined by um, some of our international students who um, study at Code and um, who want to share a little bit more about their um, experience of um, being a student of code, especially in this kind of crazy uh, year 2020, 2021, where the whole world has um, yeah, changed in a way. And um, yeah, we want to just uh, talk a little bit about um, being an international student um, in Berlin or joining us uh, remotely from somewhere else. And um, I think this is a good time for our um, yeah, my lovely guests to introduce themselves. And um, let's just go ahead and uh, start with, with uh, Philip. Um, where are you from and um, what actually brought you to, to code? I'm very curious about that. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Philip. I'm 20 years old. Yeah, still 20. Uh, 20 years old, and I'm originally from Bulgaria. Um, and this is now my second semester at Code. And I guess what originally brought me to Code was, of course, the international aspect of the university and everyone, like everything being so diverse and multicultural. Um, because, yeah, I think it's a very, very nice thing to have. And yeah, of course, also the, the learning concept, I think, was really made for me. And yeah, so far, I really enjoy it. That's it. Awesome. Thank you very much, Philip. And um, yeah, maybe next up, uh, Irina, where are you joining us from and why did you actually join CODE? Uh, so good evening, everyone. My name is Irina. I'm originally from Russia and right now I'm finally in Berlin and I'm very happy about it. And originally I actually was accepted to CODE in 2019, but I had to take a year to apply for my visa and la la la. But originally I wanted to join CODE because of of its learning concept, of course, and because again of the international community, because of the people and how the code just presented itself because it felt super exciting to be at that place. And I was extremely excited to go there from, from the first time I, I submitted my application, which was even in 2018. So. <laughs> Thank you, Irina. Um, yeah, and Joanna, where are you joining us from and why, why did you apply to code in the first place? Um, Moin everyone first. Um, yeah, my name is Joanna. I'm 20 years old. Um, I'm actually originally from Bulgaria. I'm right here at the moment. I'm planning to go back to Berlin next month, actually. I can't wait already. Um, I haven't been there since Christmas, but I really missed it. And that was, Berlin is one of the reasons that actually brought me to code, uh, up, along with uh, the sense of community that's actually one of my favorite things about code. And Berlin, the community the learning concept, there are so many things that I love about code. Thank yeah. you, Joanna. And um, then we have our guest number four, Samuel. Hi everyone, um, my name is Samuel, I'm originally from Nigeria, currently in Nigeria, as you can see I'm stuck in traffic actually, but then we say remote, so it's awesome to be remote actually. Um, I'm studying software engineering at Code, and I think the interest for me for applying to Code was also the learning concept, but then in addition to that I think it was the broad range of international community that you actually get the opportunity to actually interact with. So it's been exciting and I'm enjoying it, despite the fact that it's been remote due to Corona, but of course I hope to be in Berlin soonest and um, it's been awesome yeah. Very cool. And this is this is actually a really exciting part of like, um, yeah, doing these remote events that we can have someone joining us from a, a car in Nigeria. I think that's that's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, so you you guys have shared with us um, why you applied to code and um, I would be super interested to know if um, your kind of expectations that you had have been met and if there was anything 
about studying at code that that surprised you or that you didn't expect when when you yeah when you first applied and when you when you think back to your expectations in the beginning and um yeah whoever wants to start maybe just unmute yourself and go ahead i can i can start here because i was recently thinking about it you know because on the website they write that code is a lot about freedom but you actually don't expect it to be about freedom I and mean, then you come and it is actually about freedom and it's about your personal choice and it's about your own curiosity and that you start learning what you're actually interested in and then you're following it and of course it's very challenging and you don't know that you know they say with great freedom comes great responsibility but you never think about it that actually with great freedom comes great responsibility and I feel that it really gives you a lot of skills for real life and it teaches you a lot how to be responsible for yourself without expecting anyone else to tell you what to do, but just be, I have to do this because I'm doing it for myself, for my life, for my future, and of course for the society, but you take the responsibility. And I, I didn't expect it to be so real. <laughs> Uh, I guess I can pick up on this, uh, and I, I completely agree with what Irina said. Um, I think basically what I expected was totally matched. Um, but again, like she said, it really you don't really expect it. You don't think about how hard it is actually to be pretty much on your own when you, it comes down to choosing what you want to do, what you want to work on, because it's actually a lot harder. Uh, you would think that it's easier if you obviously choose what you want to work on and what your project will be but because you have so much freedom and you have so many options it's actually a challenge to just pick something and commit to doing it um but that's a very exciting part of it and i think it's for me personally it's great uh, i think I, I i learn way more this way because i can focus on whatever interests me um but yeah of course it's challenging um there's these periods where it, you you really wish someone would be just like yeah just learn this learn that and then you're done but of course when it comes down to you it's basically you and your willpower and it all comes down to how motivated you are and how much you want to learn yeah also on me on the on the freedom part i would definitely agree with everything said before i just want to say that i sort of expected the freedom at code, I was not surprised there, but I'm learning more and more about the definition of freedom as much as I spend time at code. Um, you imagine one thing and then the semester comes and it goes along and gets you'd say harder or more different. But yeah, totally um, it was everything that happens at code for me is beyond my expectations for now because I, I'm really happy with having the chance to choose. Um, to choose and be responsible for what I'm doing at the moment. Absolutely. And just to add about imaginations, I think for someone like me who was coming from a traditional institution where you were basically told the things you had to do and when to do it, and then if you're not doing it, you actually either get an F or you get a very terrible grade. I think it was a really total change of concept for me. I expected someone to actually tell me, okay, this was what you needed to do in order to get this grade. But then at code, just to emphasize the whole point of freedom and the concept of the learning um, at code, I think when we talk about freedom, no one really tells you per se, like this is something you expected to do, like nothing is really set in stone except for the basics. And then that freedom you get to actually decide to pursue curiosity, like maybe something interests you and you feel this is something you want to learn because you feel it's going to be really vital for you in the future. And then you decide to pursue it and then you commit to it. I think that is the most interesting aspect of learning at code because I mean, you, you approach challenges and rather than run away, you actually um, empowered to actually confront them because you've got a wide community of people who can actually support you and guide you. Super interesting, if you ask me. Awesome, oh, thank, thank if, you all. If I might just finish about the, the community super quick, I'm also really happy about the community here. Um, from uh, Maybe we had one expectations before joining club, but after that we were super, I, I think that everybody had some expectations, but we were super amazed even after that, like some small things, even having a beer with the founders and things like this, apart from all of the support you get, we, we're really a community and I love this about code. 
great. Thank you so much. And thank you for that add on. And of course, it makes me happy that um, the things that we that we say and the things we have on our website are actually true. And so if everybody who is joining, who is maybe thinking about applying or who is in the process right now, who's joining the session today. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually true. It is all about freedom and it is, it is all about, you know, choosing your own learning path. We don't just um, put fancy words on our website. <laughs> Um, I think you you all kind of touched on it a little bit. Um, I would also like to to ask you all about um, the biggest challenge that um, you had to face so far um, when it comes to you know your journey to code. Um, uh, Irina, you mentioned that that you just moved to Berlin. Um, how was that process for you? Maybe also getting getting a visa, finding a place to live. Um, what what was the most challenging aspect there? To be honest, um, I was accepted to code in 2019. However, for the international students, you have to have the 10,000 euros blocked bank account. So I had to take one year to work to get those money. And so I started studying in 2020. And I'm actually super happy about this year. So I took another gap year. It was very nice. I, I got more sure in what I want to do and that I actually want to do interaction design. It really helped me to understand it better. Um, finding a place, actually it was not so hard. Everyone says that it's very hard to find a place in Berlin, but uh, for me, luckily it wasn't so hard. I applied to STV Berlin and actually um, Philip also got uh, an apartment in that place, e even on my street, <laughs> it's fun. I will write down the name of that um, thing that whoever wants to um, find a place it's very they say that you have to wait for a very long time but actually many people just wait for a few weeks or a month to get a place um to be honest i didn't really have so many challenges coming to berlin it was just normal i guess the when you move to another country from another country you of course have certain things that are not so easy but overall it's very much manageable and it's nice and with, with code, it's nice because even though you're changing the country, you can still adjust your schedule yourself by your, according to what's happening in your life. And I actually found it very nice. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to go now. Uh, I, yes, I did indeed also find very recently uh, an apartment in the same place that Irina mentioned. Um, so I would recommend applying for it if you're thinking of coming here or after you're accepted, for example, I probably that's a better idea. Um, but for me personally, I think the two biggest challenges um, with moving was for the first time living on my own and being a grown up for once and also definitely time management for me because I never lived alone before I moved to Berlin. Um, and it was a very interesting experience. Uh, it was very stressful. You have, I had to get used to it. Uh, but of course, it was very cool as well because you feel a lot more independent. And after a month or two, you feel completely fine. Uh, and then the time management was something that I think is a very important thing at Code because you can definitely get lost very easily if you don't manage everything. And in the beginning, I was a bit all over the place um, just because I never had to plan anything before. It was very straightforward, very simple. And I just went along with the flow, but then I realized that, okay, I need to structure my day. I need to put time aside to go to the supermarket and everything. So it's definitely a, a really valuable skill that you learn along the journey. And yeah, I'm still not managing fully, of course, <laughs> but yeah, it's great. I can tell you a secret. Uh, you you never manage to fully grow up. It's even when I, you I are... think I've already understood that myself. Honestly, <laughs> I, I fully embrace that fact. Even when you have approached your your thirties, yeah. you're not you're not done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And with knowing myself, it will never happen. Uh, and yeah, and another thing about the, the finding accommodation. Um, it was definitely a very big challenge for me. Uh, I'm really glad Irina managed to do it so easily, but I struggled quite a bit. And I have a lot of friends that also struggled quite a bit. 
Uh, and even I actually came to to code without having a, an apartment yet. Uh, I basically stayed in a friend's apartment, which was in Potsdam, which if any of you know where it is, it's like an hour and a half away from campus. Um, and I stayed there for about a month or two and because I didn't have a place. And after that, I found one. Um, so yeah, there's there's always gonna be, it's always, always gonna be very dynamic. You're probably not gonna find something that you're gonna stay there for three years, right? It's a bit unrealistic. So you're always changing it up and yeah, it's pretty dynamic. Yeah, thank you for, for sharing, Philip. And um, yeah, maybe the other two, Joanna, Samuel, what, what were your biggest challenges so far? Um, I think so far, one of them would be for me actually having to unlearn so that I could relearn. Like um, my foundation, like coming from basically from a traditional institution, there were a lot of things I felt were going to be same with code. I mean, it was a university and then I expected some certain things to remain unchanged, you know, but then um, and then coupled with the whole having to do it remotely, you know, I had to actually unlearn a lot of things to actually relearn and I think it's been interesting for me since I mean that's the whole point of having to study at code nothing is actually you know predefined nothing is thought out at first you have to just figure it out as you go and I think it's interesting because these days the problem we face around the world nobody tells you that this is a problem and it's coming I mean it just shows up and you have to handle it so how you actually get to find out those solutions, I think it's part of the training we get at code. So mine, it's just been having to deal with, um, you know, relearning and unlearning, but I think I've been managing it well. If you ask me, like I've been surviving, but it's been fun. So yeah, for me, that's just it. Um, for me, um, I don't know if it's true for me, but I would definitely like to put the blame for all of my problems uh, for the remote setting. That's what I've been telling myself for the past couple of months. Um, yeah, for me, definitely, I think it was harder adjusting to a whole new community, getting past the barrier of uh, getting to know people online, approaching your teachers online. It was probably that that was my biggest challenge. Of course, the accommodation and getting to live uh, in another country was hard as well but yeah I, I would put this but I I don't think that I wouldn't say that these were challenges that were super super hard for me or or anything just something that I had to get used to so yeah I, I would say yeah, that's okay you, you get over anything that comes to you cool um yeah thank, thank you again everyone for for sharing and um I have another question that's more more on the on the fun side. Um, I'm very curious to hear what you think is the strangest thing about Germans, about German people that you have met and interacted with so far, or about Germany as a country. <laughs> very curious about that. Okay, I think I have something really awesome about that. Um, so for me. So when, when I told my parents it was actually Germany, like everybody was like, I mean, how do you go to Germany? Germany, they are, I mean, that's the most strictest of places. Like they are so strict, they never smile. And I'm like, whoa, okay. So I kind of made up my mind that I was gonna meet a really, like a really, really harsh community where people rarely smiled, like where they were never nice people. So when I actually started at Code and everyone was super nice, like everyone wanted to help, everyone was always wanting to learn the helping hand. I was like, I mean, no, 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 like this is a disappointment. I didn't expect this. I should, I mean, you guys should be harsh. Why, why is everyone really, really so nice? So I think that would be the most um, awkward thing. I, I really came expecting to get, you know, a harsh environment. People, you know, treating me like, you know, like who's the hell is this? But then, I mean, for the last almost one year at Code, it's been like, I think, the, the greatest strength I've had at Code has been the people, and which about 60 to 70% of them have been Germans. 
and they've been super nice, super, super nice. I remember an event where it was a remote class and then they were speaking German. And then I came into the class, like I was the only one in the class, like I came in and then someone was like, oh no, wait, we don't have to speak German again. We have to try go back to English because Samuel, Samuel is here. And I'm like, whoa, like that's even in my country, nobody was gonna do that for you. So, I mean, I think that would be the most awkward thing uh, experience I've had about Germans. I, I don't know, it should be something negative, but I, I don't know, but this is super positive for me. <laughs> Just before we move on, what actually was the question? Was it the most awkward thing about Germans or? Maybe the like weirdest thing or strangest thing, but it can also be okay. positive. That's totally fine. <laughs> uh, I don't have anything on that. Um, yeah, I need to think. Uh, give me a second. I have, there's way too many things to, to say. Uh, for me, definitely shops being closed on Sunday. Uh, that, I mean, of course there's spaddies in Berlin. That's not so bad there, but that's something that I really don't like there and I was surprised how uh, in, from what I have seen Germans don't really celebrate don't have a really, really big national celebrations or anything that was a bit weird for me yeah the the shop thing is definitely true um that's very weird so plus one on that also um <laughs> yeah if you if you don't feel good about your um about how funny you are just wait until you come to germany because german humor is so dry that you will feel very funny after it <laughs> when you're surrounded by germans that's a joke by the way that's a joke i hope none of the germans in the chat get offended um no but uh germans love bureaucracy that's one thing that really that's is super weird to me and it's definitely a thing and you notice it um and that's very weird at least to me um yeah, I think so. That that's probably it. And also, yeah, I think somewhere I mentioned something about this, but um, you, I, I thought everyone was so strict and like, you know, because I think it's kind of like those. Um, it, it might be partially true, but I think it's um, I forgot how it's called. One of those things that everyone thinks it's it's true, but actually it's not necessarily true all the time. Uh, but yeah, at least in Berlin, it's very chaotic sometimes. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, also for me, I, when, when I see all these people and everyone is so nice, I was shocked. It was like strange, nice, strange thing that I discovered. I come here and everyone is just so nice. And it's all about beers. Everyone drinks beer all the time, everywhere. <laughs> Well, and you even realize that when there is no COVID on campus at the factory in Berlin, they give free beer every Friday, right? If I'm not wrong. And it's like people are having fun working and it's so nice, you know, people are not so strict as you expect them to be. All right, so sounds like um, we Germans are getting off the hook quite, quite okay here. <laughs> some stereotypes and stuff like that. But yeah, we, we do smile every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, phew, <laughs> thank God. And um, I definitely agree. I would say Sunday shops should be open. I think we can, we can just agree on that. That would be so helpful. Um, yeah, thank, thank you again so much for, for sharing. Um, I mean, Maybe you can you can um, just share a couple of more things um, for the ones of you who are in Berlin already. Um, what do you like about the city Berlin? Like, what do you what do you enjoy about um, actually being here, living here, studying here? And um, maybe for for Samuel, um, since you are um, still in your home country, what do you look forward to when you then um, finally come to Berlin? And when do you actually plan on moving to Berlin? Um, I think that would be June. Um, finally, I would come permanently for June. So yes. Now, although right now things are a bit um, chaotic in my country, but um, I'm sorry, it's, it's our nature over here, but I, I'm sure they are getting it under control. And so by June, I should be able to travel. Yes. That's good to hear. Great. I think we're all welcoming you with open arms. <laughs> But at a distance, of course. 
yeah, and maybe uh, the others. What what do you like about Berlin, about living here? It's the craziest city you're going to live in, that's for sure. Um, it doesn't matter where you come from. You've probably never seen anything like this. And I think actually, even I haven't seen anything considering we're in Corona times. And I think the city is completely different uh, right now. So, but it's still crazy. It's, as I said, it's very chaotic, but it's in a nice way. You know, you, you, you kind of embrace it at one point and you very much enjoy the energy of the city. And I just like love walking outside and seeing all the crazy stuff happening and all the people that are so themselves and like full of personality. And it's very, it's also a very, um, it's, it's very different. Like the different districts are completely different. Like you could walk like 200 meters in one way and it looks like a completely different city. So it's very interesting um, observing that. Uh, and it's definitely cool. And the people as well, I think you meet, I've met a lot of amazing people here. Uh, it's very diverse, um, yeah. Super cool. For me, I definitely like that there is a place for everyone in Berlin. It's so diverse and so different and everybody, like it doesn't matter if you're so much into bikes or museums, any kind of museums or music, there, there is definitely space for everyone in Berlin. And I, um, I, I second what Philip said. I love how you, you can actually travel inside Berlin and going in every every district makes you makes you feel like you're in a in a different city. And then even if you decide to go a bit outside of Berlin, there's so many beautiful places. I actually I never expected that before coming to Berlin. Uh, I'm so sorry myself, but before that I imagine like Berlin is in it's so much history and so different inside, like something happening and outside of it, nothing happens like a big field or anything. And then you find out about this uh, beautiful place that I just got out of my mind, but it's like the Venice of, of Brandenburg. And then there is, uh, even if you go to Potsdam, that's so close and so beautiful. And it's definitely an area that you can explore. And I'm, I, I'm actually, I was waiting so, so impatiently about the, the spring and summer to have the chance to explore it more. Um, yeah, that, that's for me. Maybe Irina, do you have something to, to add to that? Oh yeah, we'll just add something simple. I think that Berlin has very special energy and you come here and you feel this energy and it's very, it helps you to explore yourself and it, it is very artistic. So even if you're not connected to art in any way, you're just able to see this world in a, such a more beautiful not a, even beautiful way but in a different way and it's it's very beautiful about this place that it's so so much about the place itself as it is so much about you i, I really enjoy this part of Berlin, how it affects you i just want to quickly add one more thing that uh i think the city has the power and potential to completely change your whole uh perspective of how you look at others and how you actually feel because I am coming from a pretty conservative country uh, where obviously if I wear something different if I dye my hair or something you see heads turning everywhere literally you're like a walking I don't know advertisement uh, no not an advertisement I don't know but literally everyone is so quick to judge you and be like wow what is this guy doing and once you come here and you see that nobody cares like nobody cares everyone's just looking at themselves and i mean that's how it should be uh, and it completely kind of opens you up and you that we can you start being more yourself i think definitely cool awesome and i can only um second that and um by the way, about Potsdam, I, I am from Potsdam. I was born there in this beautiful little town <laughs> close to Berlin. But yeah, I agree. It's, it's um, very far if you have to commute from there every single day. <laughs> Not fun. <laughs> but you get to read a lot of books on the train, which is very nice because you or have nothing to else to do. Yeah. Or listen to music, yes, or both. But then there's also um, 
um, uh, Funkloch. I, I can just um, think of the German word right now. Like um, there's no um, internet or like phone connection um, between um, Wannsee and Grunewald or something. So this is kind of annoying. And you feel like, I thought it was, I was in Germany and um, we have a good infrastructure, but then there's no, no phone connection sometimes. <laughs> do, you, do you think that's still the case? It was the last couple of times for me, but maybe I just have okay. a bad provider. <laughs> I, I honestly don't remember, uh, but now that's very interesting that you said, I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So uh, I think we have a couple of um, questions and conversations going on in the chat and um, I can, yeah, also just kind of say a little bit um, about um, being remote and what the plan is for the future. Um, but um, everyone, if you have any um, questions for our um, international students here, um, please post them in the chat. Um, you can also then use the um, hand raise feature here on Zoom and um, we can address those questions or you can actually talk if you want to. And um, I think we would just stop the recording now so you guys can really freely kind of have a conversation and um, turn on your cameras. So um, thanks everyone for joining and um, we will hop over to the Q&A part now.